Welcome back. All right, so some news of the day for all you fine people on the internet for your Thursday, February the 15th, right past the midway mark of February. All right, so starting with Philadelphia, uh, John Tortorella. So asked about young players today, and he's quite honest. I, I honestly, I love how honest Tortorella is about it. And saying that he's seen a change and that they've had to change the way they coach young players, saying young players expect it all right away. The ice time, the contracts, everything, that the expectation is that they're just going to come in and get that. And they may not be as willing to work for it. They may not be as willing to wait for it. There are certainly those in the analytical community, too, that uh, I've, I've seen those arguments of this guy should be top line right now. He's fantastic. He's talented. Just give him that top line spot. And sometimes they're talking about rookies, and I'm thinking that's that's really not generally been the way that the NHL works because they make mistakes. And Tortorella mentioned that too, that the young players, you're going to see more mistakes. It's something that's had to be baked into his coaching at this point. And he does feel that some of them don't respect the NHL, don't respect the veterans that came before them, all the work that was put in before they got there. So, uh, yeah, Tortorella just being honest, he's not throwing anybody in particular under the bus. And just basically saying that the expectations have changed and, and that that's caused him to change. And we've seen those changes. Uh, Tortorella, the way he coaches now, he still expects all the shot blocking. He still expects the hard work and the defense. But his his overall attitude behind the bench has definitely changed. And it does feel like he gives younger players more of a chance now than he used to. Um, but yeah, so let me know your thoughts regarding what Tortorella had to say there. Uh, Connor Bedard could return tonight versus the Penguins. It sounds like there's a good chance. Basically, they're just waiting for medical clearance from the doctors to say, yep, he can play. So it sounds like he feels good enough to play. The team wants him in the lineup, so it's probably going to happen. <coughs> and against a Pittsburgh team that, uh, that really desperately needs a win right now. So, yeah, uh, we'll see if Bedard ends up playing tonight. Uh, PEI, Prince Edward Island. This is an interesting one, and it, it goes down, down the road that I've noticed the NHL going down a lot lately, and it feels weird. You have to have an official everything. Everything needs an official sponsor. So the provincial, or the, 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 the tourism board, basically, of Nova Scotia has signed a deal with the NHL to become the official travel destination partner of the NHL. I don't know how many NHLers actually go to PEI when they're going on holiday. Um, from what I saw over the All-Star break, a lot of them go to... Uh, Southern Destinations, Warm Destinations, PEI in January. Not really one of those warm destinations. Uh, and it's going to cost $2.5 million for year one. So uh, after that, there there's the opportunity for it to be renegotiated. It's a three-year deal altogether. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Like, I, I just wonder with all of these official, official, like, is this going to drive any tourism dollars to PEI? Definitely, they're expecting millions in tourist dollars. And I'm going to say this too. I haven't been to PEI. I've only heard about how fantastic and beautiful PEI is. Uh, and it's a place that at some point in time I do want to visit. But it, it does seem like an odd travel destination for the National Hockey League. So I would assume these will just be Canadian commercials or will they be American ones as well? I know that during, I want to say it's the LA games that they have like Discover Vancouver ads that show up on the on the ice which is just weird to me because I'm like, discover Vancouver. I'm, I go to Vancouver all the time. But at any rate, uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this. PEI, the travel destination of the NHL. I, I will admit, I, I kind of snickered a little bit only because I, I don't know how many players actually vacation in Prince Edward Island. I'm not saying none of them do because I know there are people that vacation there. It's just, it doesn't feel like it's a place necessarily where players are going to be going all the time. Um, or does that not matter? Maybe it doesn't matter, right? It's just, it's, it's, a, it's an agreement, but are they going to make enough to cover that two and a half million dollar cost of having that, that agreement in place? Uh, Artem Zub could return to the lineup for the Ottawa Senators on Saturday. So he's not gonna be playing tonight, but he could return on Saturday. Uh, Zub, good defensive defenseman. Ottawa misses him when he's out. Ottawa has some good depth on the blue line now. And I'm gonna say this, Bernard Docker has been really good lately. So with Zub out of the lineup, it's giving you know, a guy like Bernard Docker, maybe a bit of a chance there. And, and uh, yeah, he's he's going with it. So uh, we'll see if Zub returns on Saturday, what that does to the lineup. Yermir Yager. So he will have his jersey retired by the Pittsburgh Penguins on Sunday. Uh, it's taken a long time for us to get here. It's about time. 
and it feels like uh, for Yager to come back over and, and get his jersey retired should be a good excuse to get all the guys with the, the Yager hair and all the Yager jerseys into attendance. Uh, this year with Kladno, Yager playing a bit of a smaller role, four assists in 15 games. He's 52 years of age. He is still pro playing pro hockey. It is not at an NHL level. He won't play in the NHL again, obviously. But it, it's nice to see him getting his jersey retired and taking the time off from playing hockey in order to get that done. And he did talk as well about how it, it is more difficult to heal up. Uh, it's more difficult to get ready. It takes more time uh, to get yourself in shape. Yep, <clears throat> being right in that age range too. Yep, that's absolutely true. And so, uh, yeah, it'll be nice to see Yager get his jersey retired on Sunday. Uh, Sonny Milano, uh, upper body injury he's been dealing with. He could return Saturday against Columbus for the Washington Capitals. Uh, yeah, the Caps, Milano scoring absolutely would be a, a huge potential boost anyways to this team. Uh, Matthew Phillips on waivers. Matthew Phillips had a really strong start to the season for the Capitals. Really quiet lately. I do wonder if he's going to pass through. Like, would Calgary claim him on waivers? He knows the Flames system. They maybe could use another forward, right? Uh, but at any rate, yeah, Phillips on waivers. He's young enough that I, I would not be surprised to see him get picked up. However, his stats have been kind of rough lately. It also would not entirely surprise me if he passed through. It's one of those 50-50 things. Uh, Rem Pitlick did clear today, as would be expected. Uh, Victor Arvidsson has been taken off of LTIR by the LA Kings. That's great news for the Kings and their fans. Uh, and in order to make that room, Lazat and Grundstrom, both placed on LTIR by the Kings. So one player off LTIR, two players on. And so Arvidsson gets a chance to jump back in the lineup. And the Kings could use an, an infusion of scoring. Uh, this is a team that has had struggles now for almost 20 games. So Arvidsson getting in there, you, you you know that he's always been, you know, either coming back from or going into another injury. You just have to hope that he can stay healthy the rest of this season and help secure the Kings, A, a playoff spot, and, and B, um, you know, get them get them a little bit further maybe in the playoffs. That's, that's going to be the hope for Kings fans this year. I think if they make the playoffs and they go out in round one, I don't think fans are going to be all that happy. Um, speaking of not all that happy, Canuck fans won't be very happy that when we get the Canucks back on home ice tonight against Detroit, it will be without Dakota Joshua. Joshua has been a huge difference maker for the Canucks this year. Uh, he's out tonight. He's being evaluated. It's an upper body injury, so my guess is shoulder. Uh, but yeah, Joshua being out will make a big difference to this team because that third line has been fantastic. Absolutely ridiculous, that third line. And so now they're going to have to shuffle lines a little bit. The good news is the Canucks have been pretty good when it comes to shuffling lines around. Uh, talk, it's pretty good at figuring out who's going to work with who. And so I'm not that worried. It's an odd time as a Canuck fan that stuff that I might have worried about two, three, five, ten years ago, I don't worry about it now. I'm like, now nah, they got this. It, it's an odd time. Uh, and also when talk, it was asked about Phil Kessel today, he basically said it could be a while. He could take some time in the AHL before he signs a contract with Vancouver and made it sound like it, it could be some time before we see Kessel in a Vancouver jersey. I'm fine with that. You know, get him get him the time to, to get acclimated and get himself completely into shape and then bring him up. Uh, so Craig Conroy, not interested in a full rebuild, uh, did a Q&A that's available on, I believe it's on Sportsnet, uh, and that he wants to retool on the fly. Mentions that trading Lindholm, getting Kuzmenko back, this is kind of that retool on the fly, where it's not full selling. Uh, not interested in selling off players and ending up at the bottom of the league. That's kind of where I thought Calgary was going to go with this because you've got some veterans on long-term contracts. You're really not in a position where you could do that full rebuild. And again, as I've mentioned before too, when you do that full rebuild, it takes a while to build things back up. It can't just be done overnight. So yeah, I think it makes sense to retool on the fly. We'll see what that means for Tanev for Hannafin, potentially for Markstrom, what those deals might look like. But yeah, uh, Calgary wanting to retool on the fly, and that's the right option. Now, speaking of Markstrom, ESPN had their top 10 goalie rankings come out today. Uh, they've done defensemen, they've done forwards, and Markstrom is not listed amongst the top 10 goaltenders. Now, for this survey, they surveyed 10 NHL players and 10 people in hockey ops, which included general managers and coaches. So pretty good 
cross-section of people that they interviewed about who they feel the top 10 goalies are in the NHL. Hellebuck standing at number one, Vasilevsky at number two. I don't have any issue with that. Demko at number three, Shesterkin at number four. I don't think Shesterkin's played as well this year as he has in previous years. I don't know that I would have Shesterkin at four this year, nor would I necessarily have Sorokin at five with the way he's played so far this season. Uh, Ottinger, six. Saro, seven. Swayman, eight. Bobrovsky, nine. And Olmark in tenth. The interesting one to me, too, is Aiden Hill. Uh, apparently, injuries are the reason that he was kept out of the top ten. Uh, but... I mean, Aiden Hill, when he's healthy, I think he's one of the best goalies in the league. And Markstrom, if you look at the advanced stats, is just playing absolutely out of his mind. He's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but, again, it feels like, you know, you've got your name value and all that, your name recognition. I think that's part of the reason Ottinger is always highly rated. The actual stats don't always back that up. Uh, but, yeah, so let me know your thoughts. Which goaltender do you think kind of kind of gets the poor treatment, and why is it Markstrom? Uh, but I, I think a lot, a lot of it, too, could be Calgary sitting outside of a playoff spot. It might be easy to overlook what Markstrom's done so far, right? Um, while the advanced stats are fantastic, the, the regular normal stats uh, that we've used for as long as I've watched hockey aren't as great as the advanced stats show, like his goal saved above expected is insane. So, yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you haven't done so already. And, hey, thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.